Photogrammetry is a great way to get high quality assets. However, when you export them out of your software, usually they have high poly counts and bad topology. In this tutorial, we're going to figure out how we can clean this up in Houdini. And as a bonus, I'm going to include this free tree asset to help you. All right, so I'm just going to start off by dropping a file swap. And I like to name it high because this is going to be the high res object. And so it just, it just makes it easier to keep track of things. And oh, I forgot I need to delete that because I'm going to recreate it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose my tree.obj. And I'm providing this for you so you can follow along with the, with the same model. Oh, let's see. There are a few things I, I want to change right off the bat here. I want to delete the color information. And also, it's, it's facing the wrong way. So I'm just going to use an attribute delete really quickly. And I'm going to delete the color channel. And then I'm also just going to delete the material, the shot material path. I think that's just there because when I exported the model, I accidentally put it there. I don't know. Um, but in Agisoft PhotoScan, that's the software that I used to make this scan. It has Z up, but Houdini's Y up. And so that's why uh, what's called it's facing the Z axis. But there's this really cool node called match axis that I like to use. Well, there, there are two nodes I like to use. So that's the first one. And then the other one is, is match size. And I use uh, match size to center objects. So I'm going to plug in this match axis really quickly. And we know that Z is up. So I can just switch it from Y up right here because uh, it's X, Y, Z. So I'm just going to put zero for that one and then one in the Z. And now it's facing the right way. And I just want to raise it a little bit just so that the base is at like zero Y in the Y axis. So I'm just going to attach this match size node. And then where it says justify Y, I'm just going to put that to min. And so that goes right there to the right spot. And I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the top of this tree because it's kind of messed up there. So you can do that really easily using a clip node. And I know I'm going to want to delete pr primitives below the plane because uh, I'm going to put this to 3.5. I know 3.5 because I have it open on my other screen, so I'm kind of cheating here. Uh, let me save that, make sure I don't lose anything. And so I'm going to switch this to below the plane. And so now we're keeping the areas that we want. And now there's all these like this small islands and excess topology that we don't want. And so I'm going to get rid of that now. I think a, a really good way to do that, especially for something like this, because the tree is basically a tube. So I'm just going to create a tube around the areas I want to keep. And then, then I'm just going to use a Boolean operation. Uh, so I'm going to put the, the template flag on. And I'm going to drop down a curve node. Uh, let me see. I wonder if actually, well, I'm going to put the display flag on here. I think I'm just going to do that to make it easier to see instead of, yeah, so I'm only seeing the wireframe. Yeah, that's going to make it easier. So now I'm just going to go to set view and I'm just going to go to the top viewport. And then I'm going to click on the show handle tool so I can start drawing. And so I'm just going to like outline the areas I want to keep. And it's just going to be a rough shape. You don't have to make it perfect. You can always change it later too. And I'm just going to close the shape. So I'm just going to hit enter. And then and then if you just hit close here, it'll close it. And this is looking good, but it's a little bit like uh, jagged. So I'm just going to type in, oh, what is that node? Uh, resample. Oops, dang it. I need to put that back on. There we go. So if we go down to where it says treat polygons as, I'm going to switch this to uh, subdivision curves. And that's going to make it a lot smoother. And something cool is you can actually leave the display head on here, but if you click on the curve node, you can actually move these around and that makes it really easy to adjust it. And you can see it smooth too, which is really cool. Anyway, I'm not too picky about this. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and extrude this upward because right now it's just a flat plane and that's not really helping us. So I'm going to type in poly extrude. And I think because it's per, it's uh, this this color, that means that I'm going to have to go in a negative direction to make it go up. So yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm just going to actually, I need to put the template back on so I can see how high it is. And so now I'm just going to move this until I cover up the whole object. And so my goal is to just keep everything that's inside here. Oops. 
So what I'm going to do is now I can take off the display template or the template flag. I'm going to type in boolean and plug that in. Oh, it's getting stuck because it's actually I don't want it to do it. All right, there we go. Now that I have both connected, I'll turn that on, and it should cut out all the areas I don't want because it's on subtract. And I'm gonna type in null. I hate how the visual the visualization shows and you can't get it to go away unless you click another null. But yeah, yeah, that's that's working nicely. Uh, something else I I like to point out is that occasionally there's like parts that are floating around you may not see it, and so just to ensure that I've deleted all the areas I don't want. I like to use the labs delete small parts node. Uh, where is it? Right here. And it has this really cool setting and it says extract largest piece. And basically what that means is it just finds the largest piece and then it deletes everything else. And since I know, and since usually the, the piece that you want to keep will be the largest piece, it'll get rid of all those other parts. And now I'm going to just drop down a normal and connect that in. I'm going to name this render because this is going to be the the node that we render because we're going to bake this onto a lower res version. Alright so I think the next step is going to be to make the material. So I'm going to go here and drop in a principled shader and I'm going to rename this to high material so high MTL and make sure the base color is at 1 because if you multiply your color by 1 then it won't change at all because if it's at 0 0.2 it's going to get darker so I'm going to go to textures and then use texture and I'm just going to find my I didn't really name it diffuse but it is the diffuse so tree uh, I'm going to actually drag that on because I forgot to do that and then show texture so that we can actually see it and then the other thing I'm going to do is just enable the normal map and so I, I, at least I named this one normal so I'm not too bad at naming alright it's looking good so the thing is is that this is really high topology uh, let's see 280 and that's not even that high because like some photo scans that I've had are like crazy like I think when I originally built this mesh it had like something crazy like 9 million but in software or in Agisoft it let me lower it um, but here in Houdini I'm gonna lower it even more but as you know like if you change your topology it's gonna mess up your UVs and so if you change the UVs and the texture is not gonna look right and I can show you that because if I type in remesh and I'm going to put the size to like 0 0.6 or something. I think that'll work. And I'm going to plug this in. Yeah, you can see all the UVs are like messed up because obviously they've changed. And so the way to, to get around this is we're going to bake. We're basically going to take this high res object and we're going to bake the textures onto this lower, this lower res object. And we can bake out things like a normal map and displacement. And that way we can keep detail even though the mesh is going to be lower resolution. So really quickly I'm going to go back to this viewport and I'm going to turn off textures just so I can see it. And I think I'm actually just going to, let's see, what, what poly count? I'm going to make it just a little bit better quality. So I'm going to do 0, 0, 4 and we'll let that cook. And I think that's going to be good enough for now. In order to do texture baking though, we do need UVs on this lower res object. And one of the nodes, instead of doing that manually, I'm just going to type in labs auto UV. And it does a pretty good job for the most part. So let's let that cook. And yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to turn on the UV distortion. And hey, that's actually pretty good. When I was doing it earlier, I, I was getting really bad UV distortion. A cool trick is that if you have lots of bad UV distortion, basically any of the areas that are red are really bad, or any area that has color is going to be really bad. So if you type in UV flatten and then connect that in, well, I mean, it changes. I mean, you can see right here, like the red and blue areas are the stretched areas. Uh, let's see. Give me one second. I got to check my other screen. So I'm going to switch this to angle base. I believe it's slower, but it gives you better results. And then do preserve seams. And if you do this, this will um, help, uh, what's it called, get rid of some of the UV stretching. But it looks like in this, or the UV distortion, but in this case, it looks like I don't even need it because it seems to be working pretty well. But there is one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do a UV layout node and I'll connect that in and that's just going to lay out everything in a good fashion but I also like to turn on scale islands to match their surface areas that's always a good setting to turn on and I'm going to turn off visual the visualization of the UV distortion because I don't really need it right now because everything was good 
and I'm going to type in UV quick shade just so that we can check the UVs really quickly. And oh yeah, I forgot you gotta have textures on to be able to see it. And that should be good enough for now. That's uh, like I said, these UVs don't have to be perfect because you're just baking the texture onto them. So these are gonna be good enough for what we're doing. All right, I'm gonna disable the snow. I'm not gonna delete it because I may need to check it later. But yeah, you can see, look at this, all the, the textures just like all messed up. So I'm gonna actually hide that because we don't need to see it right now. And just like before, I'm gonna type in normal. And I'm gonna call this the, the low. I'm just gonna name it low because it's gonna be the low uh, res version. I don't know why I typed in low. I need to type in null. That's what I need. All right, and then I'm going to name this to low. All right, perfect. And we actually need the display flag to be on the high res object because this is going to be uh, the high res, as I said, and we're baking it onto the low res ones. And in order to do that, we actually need two objects. And right now, we just have one. So the reason why I have this null is because I'm going to create a new object right here. So I'm just going to do geometry. And I'm going to name this one low. And let me go back here. If you if you click on this eye right here, you can copy this path. And I'm just going to do copy. Then I'm going to go back to low and I'm going to do object merge. And I'm going to hit paste. I have no idea why it has a symbol here, but just go ahead and erase that. And let me just turn off hide other objects. So I, all I'm focused on is this right here. All right. And give me one second. I'm going to check my other screen. And I think we're good to go where we can start baking now. All right, so when you do texture baking, you need to have both of your objects on. So I'm gonna, so even though it may look weird in the viewport, like if you turn off the high and then bake it, it's gonna turn out black like your texture and that's not what we want. So make sure they're both on. And I'm gonna go to out and I'm gonna drop down a texture bake node or a bake texture node. And there's something I like to point out there's actually a glitch right now. Um, if you don't do this, you're, you're going to see the seams. And hold on, I'm going to go to side effects really quick and pull up some. All right, here we are, this post that I did. Uh, if you if you use the default settings, you're going to get seams wherever the UVs meet. And it's going to look like that. It's going to look really weird. So I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. It's really easy. All you have to do is go to advanced and then driver and then it says copy alpha to planes right here. Uh, by default for some reason it copies the alpha to the base color and diffuse color. I don't know why and here hold on let me pull up that, that article again. And the reason why is because you use this, this is the correct, if you look at this photo right here, uh, this is using the game baker because it, it works with the game baker but it doesn't work with the regular texture bake wrap and so basically um, you can see that this is the diffuse that came out of the labs wrap and this is the diffuse that came out of the texture bake wrap and you can see that we have this setting that just fills in all the the area with uh, just like whatever the diffuse color is of the surrounding objects and so that will help get rid of the seams because if you don't have that you get the seams here and what's happening here is that the alpha for some reason is being saved to this diffuse plane and so it's cutting out all this diffuse fill and so that's why you see these seams but that's not what we want and uh, let's see this is a known bug so hopefully they're going to fix it soon but it's easy to fix all you have to do is come here well, I mean it's easy to fix now that I figured it out well it was it took a long time for me to figure that out but if you just remove that now it's not going to copy the alpha to those image planes so you won't have to worry about that problem Oh, let's see. So it's going to say UV object right here. And that's actually the low object. It's because like we have the low object with UVs. And then high res object. We're going to select high. Makes it easy. And let me just show you something. I'm going to type in labs game baker. The reason why I do high and low is because they just, that's how they name it here, which is much easier to understand. Target mesh low, source mesh, or source mesh which is high. So I'm going to just delete that because I don't need it. And output picture. I'm going to just go hip and then I'm just going to do, I'm going to make a new folder call, called render. Well, actually it's going to do it for me. So I'm just going to do a dollar sign hip slash render. And then let's just call it tree.exr. You, you can do either .exr or .rat, but it has to be one of those two. So uh, let's see. Oh, I need to put a slash here, not a period. 
All right, so that's going to go into hip, then render, then tree.exr. The reason why it needs to be exr or rat is because we're going to bake out different image planes. And in order to do that, um, only certain formats can have image planes and exrs and rats are two of them. So that's what we're going to use. And extract format TGA is going to be fine for what we're doing. And we're going to want the, uh, let's see, diffuse color. And then also let's just do normal, tangent space normals, which is good. And let's go to baking. Well, actually, let's go to unwrapping. Usually the only thing I have to change is the ray bias. And if you don't have this number high enough, you start to see black areas or empty areas. So I'm just going to put that to one just to ensure. But other than that, everything else is pretty much fine. You don't usually have to change anything else unless you want to. Well, actually, there is one other thing that I changed. It's under, where is it? Uh, oh, here it is right here, the resolution, because by default, it's pretty low. So I'm just going to switch this to 2K, and that should be good. And I'm going to go ahead and bake this out really quick. So I'm just going to hit render to disk. All right, you can see it starts off with EXR, but because we have extract image planes, once it, what it's going to do is it, it's going to extract all the image planes, like diffuse normal. And it's going to save them out as TGA files right here. All right, there they are. Perfect. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Image Viewer really quickly, and I'm going to just view them just to make sure they worked. And let's look at the diffuse color. Oh yeah, we can see that's that's looking good. This is definitely gonna work. And then let's also look at the normal just to make sure the normals came out fine. Yep, here are the tangent space normals are looking good. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this path really quickly and let's go back to object level. And now we don't need this turned on. Uh, let's see. So let's create another material. So I'm just gonna make a principal shader. I'm just gonna name it. Uh, I have to get double click it really quick. I'm just gonna name it low make it easy to differentiate and then again we want this just to be white and I'm also just gonna change the reflectivity just because we don't really need any and for the textures I'm just gonna do base color and then I'm gonna add the new um, the new texture that we just exported and obviously we're gonna choose the diffuse and then for normal we can just come here and choose the normal that we exported uh, right there and let's turn this on and I don't think I applied it yet yeah, there we go. And that's looking pretty good. Let, let's compare it to the other one. So I'm going to turn this on. And I'm just going to move it back a little bit. And wow, you can see that that's like pretty close. You, you can't even tell the difference. It's like almost perfect. And let me go here really quickly. And let's see how much this one. Yeah, this one was uh, 25,000 primitives. And this is the low quality one, 25,000 primitives. And the high quality one was 280, so almost 300,000. And they pretty much look the same. But yeah, that's the cool thing about, about texture baking. So even if you change the UVs, you can just take that texture and bake it onto a lower res object. All right, well, I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get to it. But other than that, just, just have a good day. Thank you.